In this video we're going to discuss finding the domain of a function. And I did another video where, you know, if you've got the graph of a function you can just read the domain and range off from it. But in general you're not going to have the graph of a function. You're going to have just some kind of arbitrary formula that you're going to have to come up with. So again, this video is not going to cover kind of, you know, every example out there, but it's going to give you a very basic idea of what you need to think out for or look out for, excuse me. There's really only two rules that you really ever need to worry about. And the first one says, if you get zero in the bottom of a fraction, that is bad. Any value of x that will make that happen in your formula, you're going to want to leave those out of the domain. The other scenario is if you have a, a negative under a root. And this is where you have to be careful because you can have negatives under odd powered roots, that's fine, but if this is any even power, 2, 4, 6, 8, a billion, and 2, you can't have a negative number underneath an even powered root. So those are really the only two restrictions that you're going to have to worry about when finding the domain of a function. Again, when you go to find the range, you know, there's not a good, a good arbitrary way to find the range. Um, there's some calculus techniques that you can use to help you out, but in general, almost always, you're just going to want to graph the function and, you know, just read the range off from the graph. You know, in some cases there are exceptions where you can kind of reason it out, but in general, um, that's going to be the case. And certainly by and large, most problems you're going to see are just going to ask you to find the domain anyway. So let's look at our first example here. We've got 1 over x minus 2. Well, is there any value that's going to make the denominator 0? Well, clearly, but the idea is we'll just set the denominator equal to 0. And if we solve this, we'll get simply that x equals positive 2. That's going to be a value that we're going to need to leave out of the domain. So my domain in this case would be from negative infinity up to 2, comma, 2 to infinity, since we're leaving that value out. And again, sometimes I make a little number line. Here's 2. It's the one value I'm leaving out. Everything to the left of that is OK. And then everything to the right of that is OK, which is the other interval over here. So let's look at some more examples here. Sorry about that, trying to improve my lighting here a little bit. Um, let's see, where did my examples go? Alright, so now suppose we have this example. Suppose we're looking at 1 over x squared minus x minus 6. It's the same idea. We basically just need to figure out what values, if any, are going to make the denominator equal to 0. So if I set the denominator equal to 0, x squared minus x minus 6, I'm going to get, so let's see, remember when you factor you need two numbers that multiply to this number, but add up to the number in the middle. Well, 3 and 2 certainly will give me a 6. Since I need a negative number, that means 1 needs to be negative and 1 needs to be positive. And negative 3 plus positive 2 equals negative 1. So if I solve this equation now, I'm going to get x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. And x equals negative 2. So those are going to be the values I'm going to leave out. Again, here's negative 2. Here's 3. So my domain and in interval notation will be from negative infinity to negative 2, between negative 2 and 3, and then from 3 to infinity. Okay, so this is running into my next example here. Let me uh, just kind of section it off here a little bit. All 
All right, so for my next example, now I'm throwing in a, a little bit of both things. I've got a radical in here, an even powered root, along with, um, again, some stuff in the denominator. But if you think about what values of x will make the denominator 0, notice if you try to solve x squared plus 4, well, what value of x would give you 0 in the bottom? Certainly 0 wouldn't, because if you plug x equals 0 in, you'll add 4 and just get 4 out of it. But likewise, if you plug any negative or positive number in, when you square it, you're going to get a positive number. Well, if you add 4 to a positive, you're still going to get a positive in the bottom. So there's no restrictions on the denominator. Well, what numbers do we need underneath the square root? Well, recall underneath the radical, you need numbers greater than or equal to 0. So I'm just going to write that down as an equation. I need the stuff underneath the radical to be greater than or equal to 0. So if I solve this by adding 1 to both sides, I'll simply get x greater than or equal to 1. And again, that's my domain. Everything from 1 and bigger, so I'll have from 1 to infinity. Let's look at two more examples here of finding the domain. All right, so in this case, I've got 1 over the square root of x squared minus 4. So we'll do the first one here. Well, normally the stuff underneath the square root, I want it to be greater than or equal to 0. But since this is in the denominator, it would also be bad to get 0. So I need x squared minus 4 to be strictly greater than 0 in this problem. I only need positive numbers underneath here. And recall to solve an inequality, you factor it just like a regular equation. So if I factor x squared minus 4, I'll get x minus 2, x plus 2. And now you have to be careful. You can't, if it's an equation, you just set each piece equal to 0 and solve it. But inequalities are a little different. So a little refresher here. The numbers that will give me 0 are going to be negative 2 and positive 2. And if you've forgotten how to solve inequalities, definitely take a look at one of my other videos because I've got some more examples of these. I'm going to make a number line and plot negative 2 and positive 2. And the idea is this is going to give you three separate intervals. And you need to check each interval. So I have numbers to the left of negative 2, in between negative 2 and positive 2 and then numbers greater than 2. I'm going to take a number from each interval and see if it satisfies this inequality. Notice if I plug negative 2 in, I'll get 0 on the left side, and 0 is not greater than 0. So negative 2 is out of the domain. Likewise, positive 2 is out of the domain. So suppose I take a number smaller than negative 2. Let's suppose it's negative 10. Well, negative 10 minus 2 is going to be a negative number. Negative 10 plus 2 is going to be a negative number. I've got a negative times a negative. That gives me a positive number. And a positive number is certainly bigger than 0. So these numbers are good. What if I use 0? Well, if I plug 0 in here, notice I'll get neg a negative number and a positive number. But a negative number times a positive number is a negative number, so these numbers in the middle are bad. And notice if you just look at the very beginning, if you plug 0 in, you'll get square root of negative 4, which you're not allowed to have. Likewise, if I take a number bigger than 2, I'm going to get a positive number. I'm going to get a positive number here. Well, a positive times a positive is bigger than 0. These numbers are good, and those are going to be in the domain. And this, again, is kind of a basic refresher on solving inequalities. So the domain in this case, it's going to be from negative infinity up to negative 2, but not including it, and then from positive 2 off to infinity. So last but not least, we have the natural logarithm of the quantity x minus 8. Recall that the stuff inside of a natural logarithm has to always be strictly greater than 0 you're only allowed to use basically positive numbers inside of a logarithm. Well, if I just translate that, it says that x minus 8 has to be greater than 0. And if I add 8 to both sides, it says you'll simply get 
that x has to be greater than 8. So the domain in this case will be from 8 off to infinity. So this is the basic idea when you're dealing with um, domains of functions. You just never want to divide by 0, and you don't want negative numbers underneath even powered roots. So if you've forgotten how to solve some of these basic inequalities, or maybe you've forgotten a little bit about natural logarithms, if you haven't encountered them yet, just don't even worry about them. Simply forget that last example. Um, but if you've forgotten how to solve inequalities, either linear, quadratic, or more complicated ones, maybe you've forgotten a little bit about factoring, definitely feel free to visit my website, justmathtutoring.com. Click on the free video lessons tab on the left, and if you scroll to the bottom, there's a bunch of um, algebra examples, and you should be able to find some more examples covering this stuff. So I hope this helps. Sorry about the little pause. Sorry about the weird lighting. Um, but I don't know. But that's it. Good luck.